passing. Let me actually.
Jotsky looking for that damage, finds him on the Diablo. Diablo forced it back out as their health drops low. The Immortal now is at 20. Back down Yo on the Gray Man, give me the first of all. But is it ETC? No, that's Malthale up there on Trunk. The Leila and Yudes in the back catching three people on top. That followed up by the APOC and the Lurking Hog. Catching two, but this time on, it's going to be the first one. Wow, did you see that mosh pit? Four man mosh pit while on a conveyor belt. That was like a regular sushi. There's the lead, catches him in the mud pit. Time trap does pop. Uh, mosh pit goes out. Fugu still in trouble. Pops to stay alive. I didn't think they had a chance. I thought it was all over. We said all or nothing, and they got absolutely everything. All right, there we go. It would help if I had my sound settings accurate. Hello, friends. Welcome to game two of the Couch Regenapalooza. First cast this season, I get to cast my friends on Regen Couch. Regen Couch. Man. Boy, it is a Saturday. Get to cast my friends on Duritan's Couch, my friends on Regen Phoenix, and uh, most importantly, Scout those scoundrels for the civil war on tuesday thanks to arrow for uh for taking our set tonight uh was a really fun set so i was uh, happy it got casted and here we are for our second one division b northeast doubleheader today uh Duritan's couch regen phoenix game one will be on battlefield of eternity uh, Arrow has a spectacular uh, overlay to show the maps and the bands, but it's been so long since I've cast it, it wasn't working, and I didn't have time to fight with it. So I'm just going to tell you. Duritan's Couch, Band Altrek, Pass, and Braxis Holdout, Regen Phoenix, Tomb of the Spider Queen, and Dragonshire, and uh, map pick of Duritan's Couch uh, for Battlefield of Eternity. And the fun of replay casts is we don't have to wait for players or lobbies or drafts. We can just go right into game, and uh, so we shall, after I double-check um, the sound settings one more time, and it's a good thing that I did. All right, so into game number one. Oh, you're killing me. I double-checked this yesterday. You are absolutely killing me, Smalls. There we go. Boy, that was weird. A little bit of delay, but I'm glad I didn't have to fight with anything. So, game number one. Let's see. Oh, you know what? My daughter was playing, and I changed the sound settings on here. There we go. Take. Okay, we're, we're doing it, boys. We're getting the sound. Game number one, the blue team, Duritan's Couch, featuring Goliath on Garrosh, Sailor Twift on Anna, a fish on Leeming, Earl Schlepp on Jimmy Rayner, and Gohan on Gazlo, missing Captain Wedge from the couch in this game. The battle begins in 10 Control seconds. shift O. Oh, you're a beautiful man, Arrow. Thank you very much. Speaking of Arrow, Five, the red team, four, Regen Phoenix, three, Phantoms two, will be on Kira, one. Rabbit Penguin on Varian, Darabo on Nazebo, Arya on Anduin, and our friend Arrow on Blaze. So Nazebo with a balance patch a couple weeks ago, kind of Working his way back in, you're seeing him banned, you're seeing him play. We saw him in uh, the first set that Arrow casted. We're seeing him here again. There is the groundbreaker, the toss, the charge, the pull. Here we go. So very uh, melee heavy, burly team here for Regen Phoenix with the old triple bruiser. Very in Kira. And Blaze, I'm going to rely on Nazebo for all of their range damage. They don't have what you would uh, typically think of as a burn hero, a Ming or a Bala, a Grey Mane, 
like that. There's the throw. Rabbit Penguin actually eating one for Darabo there. Nice tank in there by Penguin. Now Goliath in trouble, really eating the damage and uh, running the other way. In the top lane, let's go check into the classic Blaze Gazlo matchup. Looks like. Uh, well, I was going to say that Gazlo was winning it, and then Arrow set himself on fire, and he was right as rain. Phantom's making the cameo in the top lane from here, hoping to catch Gohan out on the Gazlo. There we go. There's the stun. There's the other stun. Gazlo in a world of trouble, and it is going to be first blood over to Regen Phoenix. On the other side, however, Durathan's couch able to secure the bottom camp. Uh, make them pay for the offlane kill by getting an extra camp here. About uh, 10 seconds until the first immortal will be announced. Phantom returning to the four man. Man, it was worth the replay cast today just to learn control shift zero. I've done like between Share League and NGS over the many, many years, like 100 and X some odd casts, and I never knew control shift zero. Arrow, arrow with the with the assist. Although I'm pretty sure Arrow did that many casts in one season, that one time, uh, because the man is a machine. Both sides gonna go grab their bruiser camp. Sailor Quift tanking the camp, and they will get them at almost identical times. I mean, pretty much identical times. 22 seconds till the immortal officially spawn it. Pretty sure he did it twice. You know, I felt all good a couple seasons ago when I was like, yeah, I just hit 100 casts that I've done, and Arrow's like, hold my beer. I'm going to do that in, like, three weeks. Both teams with a heavy presence here in the bottom lane. Four members for each side. Rabbit goes in on Raynor. Uh, he's the shotgun for his trouble. Goliath riding his rubber duck in to provide zoning for his team. Let's check in on the top lane. Blaze uh, having his way right now with the uh, Gazlo and pushing with the camp. Getting some structure damage here in the top lane. Bottom lane, both four mans are going to... Well, I thought Regen Phoenix might try to get a little damage, but no, instead they're going to get the taunt onto Goliath there. Zombie wall not quite connecting. Gazlo a little bit late to the party. Dirty Couch is fighting under the Immortal. Stuns tried, but connected. And now it looks like Kira will split away. She will provide the aforementioned burn wall. Now Kira returning, a little change of mind there. Halftime secured in favor of Duritan's couch. So let's see how Phoenix plays this. It looks like they are actually going to try to defend this. Rainer and Li Ming will provide plenty of burn. Rabid kind of in that little alley there. Zombie wall splitting out the members of the couch. Uh, but Phoenix finally able to zone away Duritan's couch. However, with that Li Ming, one of the things she does really well, Rabid Penguin, he does get in there on the Ana. There's a big taunt to hear a follow-up, and Ana goes down. However, Arrow gets thrown over the wall, then pulled right back. What I started to say with this uh, Immortal so low, that's one of the things that Li Ming does best, especially on this. Meanwhile, Arrow hitting a triple stun, unfortunately not able to follow up and eating a Gazlo counter stun. Kira going in there to help out Arrow, but she phantoms Kira so low, as is Goliath and Arrow. No health, no mana for everybody. And Li Ming continues to poke, poke, poke from over the wall, what she does so well here on Battlefield of Eternity. Goliath and Phantoms clashing in the bottom lane, and it is Goliath that goes down now. Three unanswered kills. For Regen Phoenix, however, still losing the Immortal race uh, because Duritan's couch got off to such a strong head start. Nazebo is wearing it down, though. Um, I think ultimately the couch will probably get this, but uh, it won't be too big of a shield because Nazebo has just been over here throwing a whole lot of spiders at this other one. And Earl Shep going to sacrifice himself? Question mark. Yo, oh, great shotgun. He uh, secured the immortal and managed to escape barely. First objective over to the couch. Yeah, Ektra, you know what makes that emotional swing even worse is when you call out in comms to your team that you've got a triple stun here coming up and you go. 
Darabo caught out, in trouble. Good peels by Phantoms, allowing Darabo to safely, safely escape behind the wall. Immortal pushing in, Gazlo and Blaze continuing to square off in the bottom lane. And uh, this is kind of about what you would expect out of the first Immortal on Battlefield of Eternity. Uh, wall goes down, a little bit of fort damage before the Immortal falls. This ends my assault on hell. The three unanswered kills buying Regen Phoenix a little bit of an advantage in the XP department. So posturing here for both teams. Phoenix thinking about the camp. Goliath running right in there. He, This is my bush and nobody is going to tell me otherwise. Spiders, man, they are just chunking out Garrosh there. Forced to use the self-cleanse, a fish lobbing in ability. Meanwhile, the rest of the couch does manage to secure the uh, camp, but at the cost of Garrosh, he had to tank so much damage while his team was securing the camp that it ultimately ended up with him going down. Meanwhile, Arrow continually pushing in the Gazlo here. Every time we've checked in on him, Gazlo's kind of under his own wall. Um, neither hero really in any danger of dying, per se, but uh, Gazlo definitely being shoved in by this blaze here. Arrow controlling the lane a little bit more, and I'm a terrible caster. I missed a big kill on the top, and it's gonna be a second kill. No, Sailor Swift, great deals. Goliath throwing Earl Shep to safety. We have Bumper Drop, Light Bomb, uh, no Shield Wall. It's actually the uh, the other one, the E upgrade, and I forget the name of the count. Uh, Warbring, thank you. Uh, I don't know her final strike. The Zevo not showing his yet. I would imagine it would be, um, did it? Oh no, it actually is the, uh, the Spirit, the channel. Ravenous Spear, thank you. And the Ravenous Spear securing the kill onto Rainer. Arrow scaring Goliath away from following up on the Groundbreaker there. With the Rainer going down, Regen Phoenix really stepping in hard. There is one, two, three stuns and a root onto Goliath, but he is still alive. Just kidding, not for much longer. Nicely conveyed, pulling Arrow to save him. Now a fish is in trouble, and he goes down. Grab a bomb on the backside, catches two. Arrow goes down, two for one so far in favor of Regen Phoenix. Very in low, as is Gazbo, who is even lower, and Rabbit with 19 health. Lives to tell the tale. Very brawly. Yep, act yeah, absolutely. You gotta thank yourself. I used to know all of the abilities, uh, heroic abilities, pretty much all the characters, but as they've added more on roles that I don't play, uh, there are definitely some non-tank newer heroes that I don't know the names of all the abilities off the top of my head, especially if they're not quite as commonly played. Uh, somebody like Kira fits that bill a little bit. So halftime, very close for Regen Phoenix. They also do secure the uh, camp there. Garrosh forced the rock is off unstoppable arrow. Jeffrey Bolton in, doesn't quite connect. Forced to drop the bunker. Goliath taking a lot of damage. Arrow gets taunted. There's the Ravenous Spirit just slapping everybody on the back line. Gravel Bomb does catch an Azebo though. He needs a double stun, as does Gohan on the gas though. But the Gary throws him out. Oh my god, everybody is so low. Blaze the first of all. Uh, then the Zebo. Then Li Ming, two for one in favor of the couch here. There were that, I mean, that fight was so close, really could have gone either way, and now the counter kill, evening it out at two for two as they do pick up the Ana. Meanwhile, top lane, this camp getting a lot of value. So really the, uh, the draw, as it were, in that team fight actually played to uh, Regen Phoenix's favor as they had that camp pushing in the top lane and they have um, the advantage in the objective race. Gazlo showing in the top, I assume Phoenix seeing Gazlo up there, or at least knowing he was up there a minute ago, probably gonna be a little bit on the aggressive side. 
And they do secure halftime as well as being on the verge of 13 advantage. Rabbit sitting in the bush waiting to get that sweet, sweet taunt. They do catch Arrow out though. He eats a boss stun and another stun. There it goes, Gravel Bomb. Rainer and Blaze both low, but nobody going down. Garrosh pulled Rainer to safely and Arya pulled Arrow to safely. Safety. Blaze and Arrow, or Blaze on, I think they talk, Arrow on Blaze and Arya on Anduin. Both went to tap and now they have arrived back making this a five on five. Durits and Couch's mana bars are really low and uh, the health bars now even lower. Garage, Rainer, Gazlo all go down. That Ravenous Spirit actually, uh, I wasn't quite sure how that would play out, but they've actually got really good value out of it. Darabo with the Mazebo there. And second immortal of the game secured by Regen Phoenix. Blaze still top, the rest of the team rotating down, seeing if they can catch somebody who overstayed, but efficient state of Swift able to get under their own fortifications. Here comes the immortal to reinforce. Once again in the top lane, Blaze really doing a number here on the structures. Gazlo doing what he can, but this top fort is under a lot of threat from that Blaze there. He's slowly tearing it down with the uh, barbecue, oil, and fire. Bottom fort under siege as well. Phoenix doing a nice job of throwing damage to the fort while respecting the threat of the Garrosh. Rabbit is fishing. There's the EN forcing out the uh, unstoppable from Garrosh. Zombie Wall does catch Rainer, and I love that is one of my very favorite interactions for comedic value in the game. Nice job of Arya to pull Rabbit out, but it won't matter as Lee Ming picks up the kill, soon to be followed by Phantoms. The uh, the Varian charge with a zombie wall, if it's timed right, is really weird. And Arrow has been flirting with it all game, but got the 1v1 kill and then the fort in the top lane. Well played by Arrow there. Darabo, long time practice. Yeah, did the pra it's showing. I was concerned with the... Uh, you know, sitting in one place for a carry and a shotgun and a wave of force and a gaslo, so many tools to interrupt it, but uh, playing around that kind of liability of that really well and getting a lot of value out of it. Uh, yeah, the charge with the variant as he circles the zombie wall is one of the funniest things you see in this game there. And poor, uh, poor Rabbit just uh, <laughs> kind of got caught in that arrow. He does catch Rainer, throws the oil. There's Rabbit again, and a great aggressive rotation out from Regen Phoenix, but he lives, or does he? No, there's the Ravenous Spirit, along with Hero to pick up the kill. The Gravel Bomb does interrupt the Ravenous Spirit, but not before Rainer goes down. A good aggressive rotation. It looked like Rainer was certain to die, and then it looked like he was gonna get away, but he did. He went down. Meanwhile, bottom lane here, really doing some work here. And there's a lot of XP for somebody just sitting right there waiting to be picked up. You and all your servants in hell will cower before me. 16 advantage for Regen. Phoenix just going to secure halftime. I wonder if this, I think this wave arrived just in time to finish off this mercenary camp with the, uh, with the catapult. Halftime in favor of Regen Phoenix. They also have level 16 advantage. And now they're going to move down to take care of this camp just to make sure. I, I said I think it had it anyway with the Katas and the fact that they had uh, stolen the other camp, kept the blue minion waves from reinforcing. Um, and I love this play by Couch. I kind of want them just to run down here and snag this fort. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. Um, I mean, it's so low. It really won't take but a couple of shots. 
But uh, Regen Phoenix, they're looking for something. Big flank here by Rabbit Penguin. A-Fish is in a lot of trouble. Not as much trouble as Rainer is, though. Light Bomb, Goliath with a great defensive throw. However, it will not keep sure off of this. A Light Bomb potential is huge. Only catching none? One? And it goes down anyway. They have so many, they being Regen Phoenix. So many different ways to initiate a kill between Varian and Kira and Blaze. Goliath did a great job of saving Rainer from the Varian taunt, but uh, Kira and Blaze both got a hold of other people. Eventually, Anna went down. Gary can only peel so many. He did peel the Varian engage, but unable to peel off the Kira, and Anna ultimately fell. Regen Phoenix now securing a big immortal, very healthy. Rabbit over here, kind of alone. Gary does pull him in. Now Rabbit very low. A fish lobbing an ability to the side. Nice job of arrow to kind of reinforce and zone. And this immortal will push in the top the lane onto the a keep with all of its defensive structures up and intact. Worth noting bottom lane, a pretty big wave building up here in favor of Regen Phoenix. With left unaccounted, giving some more phantoms in a world of trouble. There's the light bomb, or the uh, gravel bomb, catches nobody. There is the light bomb, and that one does catch too. Anna doing a spectacular job, Sailor Twip, of keeping the teammates up. Sailor Twip saved at least uh, two members of the team there. And uh, Regen Phoenix sold out to get the kills understandably, and it was Arrow who ultimately paid the price with the counter kill on the back end. However, that is a trade Regen Phoenix will take first keep falling in their favor. Sailor Twift absolutely healing out of his mind there. I, I was shocked. Uh, that he was able to keep those two heroes up and alive. And uh, as I pointed out, though, the, that big wave that was building actually got the bottom wall down here. I think it was a little weakened from before, but, uh, but the double wave with the cat, I kind of polished it off while the two sides were fighting over that top key. Blaze just spawning. Um, I'm not sure if Phoenix knows Gazlo is in the top. If they do, they know this could be a 4v4. Rabbit decides not to contest the camp. Wise decision, simply waiting for that level 20. And really, this game right now, very strongly in favor of Regen Phoenix. They have a strong structural lead. Only one of their forts has fallen, whereas Duritan's couch only has one keep remaining. 17 to 6 in the kill count. On the verge any moment, probably with this wave of getting level 20s. Now Goliath in this bush bush. He just runs in there. Arrow tries to charge what he I assume expected with his team to be was right behind Garrosh, but he wasn't. Garrosh literally just kind of charged in the middle of Regen Phoenix pretty much by himself. Gertz's couch, are they going to come in with no 20s? They're certainly thinking about it. Regen Phoenix with the level 20 advantage. They do secure the camp. Goliath thinks about it and then changes his mind as the spiders chew on his ankles. And the camp secured in favor of Regen Phoenix, largely unopposed. Duritan's couch, I think, was just there to maybe have a little bit of show of force and possibly be around if somebody on Regen Phoenix stepped out. Now, if you're going to take a 20 a fight without 20 advantage, under your own immortal is a pretty good place to do it. And it looks like the couch is willing to take it without level 20. There's the self unstoppable by Garrick. Big Rabo Bomb catches one arrow, wisely jumping in his bunker to save himself. Health bars are so low. Garrosh goes down first. So Varian traded out for Garrosh, but the, the poison from the Nazebo really chunked out that Li Ming there. Um, and the kind of collateral damage from just being around the Immortal, securing halftime in favor of Regen Phoenix. There are three Katas in this top lane for Regen Phoenix. There's one Kata in the bottom lane. Both sides gonna just race out what's left. And uh, when Regen Phoenix secures 
their third consecutive Immortal, I believe. Duritan's Couch is going to have some very tough decisions to make. The Immortal will go into the bottom lane. The members of Duritan's Couch will arrive attack. here in force to clean up these three catapults. Down we go. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Region Phoenix will escort their catapult in. The Immortal will arrive shortly to reinforce them. And uh, if this game goes sideways, it could be the end of the game. Almost certainly this keep is going to go down. And if a couple of members of Duritan's couch fall as well, that could very easily be keep. Goliath running out past the immortal, trying to zone the members of Regen Phoenix away. And uh, Regen Phoenix just going to walk to the top lane. They know this keep will be secured. No, it will not. It has 275 health. But he will rise oh again my goodness. Bottom Keep survives with 275 health. And now Regen Phoenix has a party. They're waiting for it. Who's going to be the victim? Oh, Anna. No, Anna. She didn't go quite down far enough. Pa great patience by Arrow. You saw Regen Phoenix kind of twitching, and now they've got access to the back line. The minion wave has spotted it out. Sailor Twift caught up with the wall, but manages to run to her team. Duritan's couch does not fall for the party. Double groundbreaker coming up for Goliath, who's now split from his team. There's the stun, there is the taunt, there's all the buttons, self-unstoppable. And Sailor Twift throwing healing darts over the wall. Goliath does not pay the price for being split out from his team. And Regen Phoenix, they will uh, be contented in taking control of the map. Man, if Anna had just taken one step further, I think she would have been in for a very, very bad time. So what's the play here for Regen Phoenix? I like the camp call and then dancing around the immortal, honestly. With the cata pressure they have all over the map, really Regen Phoenix can kind of wait these out. And if they're if you play it well, you force Duritan's couch to just be too aggro, no or you can force out a 5v4 justice. with vision. Uh, double camps in the top lane. They do catch Gazlo, or Arrow does. But great patience there by the rest of the team. Nobody YOLOing in. Earl, uh, Rainer, and a fish just peppering Arrow. He eats an upgraded wave of force. Took like 60% of his health, but uh, right back at full. And Gazlo, I mean, Gazlo Blue has to deal with this. This is attack. I don't even think Gazlo is going to be able to do it fast enough. It's two camps and two katas. And now Regen Phoenix is being aggressive, as they should be. They know, absolutely know, Gazlo cannot be here to defend. And now they're going to take halftime. Great call. I think this is the right call for both teams, honestly. I think if you're Regen Phoenix, you take halftime. I think if you're Duritan's couch, you say, let's clear this out and then deal with objective after halftime. But really, Reach or uh, Duritan's couch here is just in a very poor position. Our battle cannot remain here. Oh, what a rough! That is just the worst possible spawn for Duritan's couch, and it forces them to run into here on the aggressive side because this immortal in favor of Regen Phoenix effectively ends the game. So that forces Duritan's town couch to try to control the space on their opponent's side of the map while Katas are building up in the top lane. Uh, just a really rough spot. If they aren't able to secure kills or the immortal, they're just in a world of hurt and Regen Phoenix is showing just fantastic patience. Knowing the Katas are building in the top lane, and knowing just the really rough position uh, that Duritan's couch is in. And, and not just the rough position is, they have the strong tank as, oh my goodness, Gazlo gets absolutely obliterated. And then by Garrosh going down as well. Probably the beginning of the end here for Duritan's couch. Yes. The mortal has been secured. What I was going to say is, um, Garrosh has some limitations as a tank, and one of them is kind of forcing his way into a position just like that. All you got to do is run from him, 
and it's very difficult for him to initiate, so uh, Regen Phoenix here in a fantastic spot. Down goes Anna with three down, 25 seconds left, and a full Immortal here. I have a hard time envisioning that this will not be game one in favor of Regen Phoenix, but uh, I mean, we've all seen weird things happen in this game, but that not to be the case. This core is absolutely melting. Game one in favor. Gen Phoenix. You know, the more I see the more I see Garrosh in the meta right now, um, it just kind of feels like he doesn't have a great place. I mean, maybe, maybe just me. I'm, I've never been a big Garrosh fan, but uh, in the few games I've seen him this season, it just it seems like he struggles right now. And uh, I kind of felt that way that game. I think part of it was the, the triple bruiser fielded by Phoenix was just a little bit too much for Garrosh to try to control on the front line, especially when they had a, a Gaslow. Just the lack of frontline by Duraton's cow, which let Regen Phoenix kind of just roll over them. They just didn't have enough melee bodies to keep the Kira off, to keep the Blaze off, to keep the Varian off. Uh, I was all ready for the statistics screen, but then I realized on replays that's not really an option. So, on to game number two. Game number two, deja vu, it feels like, from the set we just saw. No, Arrow Mines didn't. They just sat there. That's weird, right? Prepare yourself for battle, heroes. Yeah, maybe maybe because, um, you know what my guess is? Is, uh... Maybe mine is on the current patch, because ours was just played, and yours is on an older one. Oh, I could have tabbed. I didn't even think about it. Oh, you know what? Hold on. We're, we're, we're not going to shortchange you guys. I didn't even think about Tab because I'm a terrible caster, Arrow. That's why. I'm a terrible caster. All right. Um, hold on. Hold on. We're going we're gonna to get you guys your stats. You've earned your stats. Um, it's just going to take me a minute to do it. What up, Ace? Prepare yourselves for All right. I'm going to arrow for you. I am doing it. I'm fast forwarding it through it all and I have the screen alt tab so you guys don't hear the noise of a fasting fast game. So here we are. Currently level 6 to level 5. Exactly right. Ludicrous speed. Currently four minutes into the game, now five minutes into the game. And it is indeed at ludicrous speed. You know, I felt, uh, I don't know about you, fellow Div B Northeast people, but uh, while a couple of teams pulling ahead a little bit in the standings, I felt by and large, uh, most of the team is pretty competitive in B Northeast. I think it should be a, a, a fun season that way. Now, 10 minutes into the game. Team has destroyed the deep. Oh, see, you, guys, oh, you guys got a little, little preview of the sound there. I don't know why I didn't think of Tab. 
because I'm terrible at this. That's why. Yeah, exactly right. Um, I, I I haven't felt like any of the teams that we lost to, we lost to because necessarily the team was just inherently out of our league. Uh, was more that uh, we didn't make the plays and they did. All right. Let's go back in game. Team's core is under attack. This won't take too much longer. There is no. Blue Team's core is under attack. Our battle. Blue Team's core is under attack. Blue Team's core is under attack. Hero slain. The demon moves for the red team has destroyed a fort. The blue team has destroyed a fort. The red team's core is under attack. All right, look it. I did it, Arrow. I did it. I got the stats. Yeah, honestly, looking at looking at these comps and kind of how that game played out, I, I just think Goliath was kind of overwhelmed by Frontline. Oh my goodness, Arrow. Good lord, there you go. Get in those extra little ticks of siege damage. Goliath on Garrosh just couldn't deal with Blaze and, and Varian and Kira all by himself. So while maybe he stunted one of the various initiations, it, it didn't matter when he stopped Varian's taunt. Kira got somebody, or Blaze got somebody, and then that uh, that secondary target went down. So, uh, well executed by you guys, but uh, I really think you kind of had a little bit of an outdraft here, which which played out in the game. You guys took, took advantage. So, there. Stats. Stats. And boy, uh, I'm sure Arya felt super comfortable and safe way back there behind all those melee guys. 96,000 healing, just chilling. Talents too, good lord. There we go. Just for you, Arrow, just for you. And you know what? I'm going to improve as well because after game two and possibly game three, I won't even have to fast forward to the whole thing. I'll just remember to press tab in the first place. Personal growth. I mean, there were a number of times where those battles were, those team fights were very, very close. Uh, it's not a good stack in map, you know, only one lane. Can't double stack on BOE. All right. Back to my mediocre mug. And on to game number two which is on Towers of Doom. Those are gaming glasses or computer glasses. I, I stare at a computer a lot, um, both at work and at home. And uh, honestly, I didn't, when I first started wearing them, I really didn't think much of it, to be honest. Uh, but I've actually noticed the difference um, in my eyes. And, and actually, weirdly enough, the biggest difference I noticed was if I'm on the computer and then go to bed shortly thereafter, it's much easier to get to sleep if I had been wearing these. All right, game number two between Duritan's Couch. Prepare yourself for battle, heroes. Duritan's Couch and Regen Phoenix. Our friends over at Duritan's Couch will feature Goliath on Varian, Sailor Twift on Admiral Stukov, Earl, Shelp, Earl Schlepp on 
Buccaneer Falstad, Gohan. The battle uh, will begins be in Zool, 10 and who seconds. Did I forget a fish on Tassadar. And Regent Phoenix. Five, four, Arrow on Fioric. Rabid. One. On ETC Phantoms. Well, on Kerrigan. Darabo. On Vala and Arya. On Anna. How did you guys get Vala, Kerrigan? Man, this just looks like a murderous comp. There is the power slide on the variant. He's not quite a hero yet, but what a lurking arm coming out by a fish, really breaking up that engage. Now Arrow's in trouble. First blood over to Duritan's couch. Sailor Swift with the lurking arm completely broke up that engagement there from Regen Phoenix and probably saved Goliath. It's not feeding when you're playing the orc. <laughs> Getting caught out by Goliath, but no taunt yet, so it's okay. Now Phantoms is here, as is Rabbit on ETZ and Anna, and now Goliath and Sailor Quip in particular is in trouble. There's the power slide combo, a little bit off the mark, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Just kidding. Good peel by Goliath. The fish coming here to pressure and peel with damage. One of my favorite things to do is peel with damage. And surprisingly, uh, Sailor Twift able, able to escape. We're gonna have a classic Leoric Zool double soak matchup, which will definitely be in favor of Zool early. Um, unless I don't remember that they change. Does he still need level four to double soak? No, they changed that with him, right? Is this before that? I don't know. Let's see. Before the recent Leo changes, one through four, Zul was a much better double soaker. But I don't know if this game was before or after the change. Before the changes, Leo needed the Neil Peasants to keep up with Zul. Both sides have secured their pumpkin sappers in the bottom lane. Posturing, posturing, numbers manage here for Regen Phoenix. Taunt is here, is available. And on to Kerrigan, who is taunted and silenced. It's like a, uh, a match of engage and counter engage. Uh, Sailor Twift has been really good so far with those lurking arms. Uh, and, and I think... Uh, there is the taunt, and I sympathize so much with Rabbit there. Uh, a good, especially with the. Uh... So, I will say, I've gone on the rant before about Crowd Surfer at 4 with ETC, because I love loudspeakers. However, I have found through the hard way. With this, it was this exact trio that convinced me, actually, as the taunt and the lurking arm and the wall on the character. The exact combo of Varian taunt, lurking arm, Tassadar wall. The altar is ours. Now when I play Tassadar, I hate giving up loudspeakers, but I always go crowd to get out of that freaking wall. Is that all? There's the taunt, there's the lurking arm again. Still too far for the wall, or maybe it was on cooldown. Nice counter slide on the Baron. Uh, and there's the counter kill. And this is, I think, honestly, where Regen Phoenix's bread and butter could be. If they kind of survive the initial taunt silence and then can turn around and drop their CC on it, they're having a problem securing the kills when Sailor Twift has that lurking arm available. So if they survive through it and it's not available, I think that's when they can secure those kills. Lurking arm is so good at breaking up the momentum. Nice combo there by Phantoms on the Kerrigan. A-Fish now running, running, and surviving. Three unanswered kills so far here for Duritan's Couch. My shot in them. Looking for a combo. Varian does land the taunt. Where's the lurking arm? There it is. 
the damage maybe a little too far away. Goliath did not sell out for that last 96 health, and Darabo just going ham on the backside. Tassadar used the wall to hold Vala in, but it uh, turns out that Tassadar was the one that was trapped, not Vala. Nice play there by Darabo. Alter spawning early, there's the charge, there's the taunt. Vala vaulting away just before the working arm, and now it is Varian who's in trouble. Kerrigan combo doesn't quite hit, but it does not matter. Uh, meanwhile, bottom altar was secured by Falstad in favor of Durgan's couch, and that will lead to a split. His arrow on Leo will secure the middle one, and Regen Phoenix, with no variant available, is going to go ahead and invade the Pumpkin Sappers, take them from Durgan's couch. Zul, in the meantime, is doing Zuli things, clearing waves, soaking experience, getting Merc camps. I love me some loudspeakers for with ETC, but uh, there have been definitely some scenarios, Tassadar wall being one of them. Gohan is in trouble here. He steps forward, Rabbit waits on the power slide. He hits it. There is the combo from Phantoms, and that will secure a big kill onto Zul. In the meantime, great response from Durrison's couch. They just kind of sneak in here and secure this thing. Rabbit is looking for somebody. He does land the aforementioned face melt, but uh, Tens came online, Gust to save himself. Speaking of Tens, we have Flailing Swipe, Archon, Gust, Poison Nova, Shield Wall, for Durrison's couch, for Regen Phoenix, it is going to be in Tomb, Strafe, uh, what is that? Uh, I don't know. Nano boost, uh, of course. Not. Nano boost. I assume nano boost is Kerrigan or nano boost Bala. I, either one would be good. I, I think it'll be Kerrigan. Let's find out. Nano boost for Anna. Mosh pit, of course, for ETC and Ultralisk for Kerrigan. Another bush party here for Regen Phoenix. Goliath. The with the rabbit wisely power sliding defensively. The combo that Duritan's couch has here with the taunt and the wall and the silence. They can, the time is if now. executed correctly, they do get the ball out. But if there is a big mosh pit, hole comes out, actually pulls one of them out, but it doesn't matter. That is an absolute murder from Regen Phoenix, picking up three so far, and they are not done yet. Great play by Rabbit on his kind of trademark ETC. Somebody clip that. Yeah, I was wrong. Nano ETC. I'm going to convince my healer to do that if we ever decide to run out. What I started to say before... Oh, my... Oh that, oh, that was not a good decision. But the gust saves him again, and now Rabid is able to limp away. The uh, taunt silence combo... Uh, allows you to, if you do it properly, pick off anybody on the side of Regen Phoenix. ETC can be picked off uh, with the silence. Poor Arrow gets to chase Zul around the whole game. He does use the Entomb, and the slows all the buttons. Gohan in a lot of trouble. Arrow really putting it on him, but also Hero eating the pumpkin sappers, and I missed. You know what? We're, I'm, I'm going to... I missed. There was so much going on. Is it is it, uh, kill on Tassadar? If, the, if there was more than just the Tassadar kill, I would have actually rewound it because we can use like Tassadar to do that. But only one. I was hoping we would catch Arrow with his one v one kill against the Duel because he was uh, he was efforting for it. He wasn't quite able to secure it. This fort not long for this world if Regen Phoenix can get into. It. There is the charge and the taunt, the pivot taunt on the Bala. Silence not quite there. Darabao able to vault to safety, and now the minion wave is here. Are they gonna get this for? No, not quite. Instead, they will retreat. They will set up for objective. No, actually, the sappers. They do have level 13 advantage. Does Regen Phoenix? Uh, for health-wise, though, uh, this game is dead even. 
And despite Zul soaking swift, his little heart out, the 8-3 to three kill numbers in favor of Regent Phoenix the has given them you. a level advantage. This Interrupt will be, no! Arrow was able to get it just barely. I thought for sure they would interrupt that, but they didn't. So both teams take the gentleman split. I kind of want Phoenix just to dive this real quick. So these sappers will go at core. Especially with everybody showing here. Go kill that fort. Oh, Darabo kill the fort. Yes. Excellent. Nicely done, gentlemen. And then they're going to go on the mid lane here. And great sleep dart by Arya securing the Zul. Leo does sacrifice himself in the top lane. But once again, that is not competing. That is getting a trade value. Um, and in this case, honestly, the death probably worth it. Get some slows out. Make sure they don't rotate on his, onto his team. So both sides trading kills and trading forts, but uh, a Leo to Zul definitely favors Regen Phoenix, and a bottom to top definitely favors Regen Phoenix as well. So I think they kind of won the trade, if you will. With level 16 advantage, they're hoping somebody will step out. Goliath almost did, but he throws his Qs out to dismount and slow. There's the taunt. Is the lurking arm going to be there? And it is great combo by Duritan's couch, able to pick up the kill onto the ETC. There is the Nano Kerrigan, but Sailor Twift with the flailing swipe says no, but unfortunately he flailing swiped under tower and actually ate a bunch of tower shots. Uh, Falstad goes down as well. Um, I actually think if uh, Tassadar then going down Goliath soon to follow, I think if Stukov didn't flailing swipe under tower, I think he would have gotten and out, and, and that fight maybe killer. goes differently. So Leo and Zul squaring off in the top lane, and Gohan actually uh, gets caught between an Entomb and an uh, Altar. The, uh, bell Altar, what are they called? Bell Towers, thank you. So Arrow keeping Zul from channeling. And Phoenix looking strong here. ETC grabs the back. Sapper's moving him in the bottom lane. 16 advantage. All members of Regent Phoenix are here. There's the taunt on the Leo. He's probably going to go down, and he does. Zool's still showing in the bottom lane, though, so no reason for Phoenix not to step in on this. Flailing swipe. Shove Phoenix away, but he doesn't get caught in the Kerrigan combo anyway. And then a huge mosh pit coming out by Rabbit. Will they go around to the other side to block him in? And they do. And it is an absolute massacre in favor of Regen Phoenix. Somebody's going to sit here. Oh, there! I, I wondered if they were going to take top and then channel, but instead they're actually going to take boss and then channel, and then I imagine go take top back. So Duritan's couch is in a real rough spot here. Um, and instead of taking top back, they're going to send Leo to actually take top back, and they're going to go ahead and rip this uh, mid fork here. Not a bad call at all. Uh, you do have to be careful of a gust, though, and the danger pings are coming out. I think that's what that was. Is let's let's not get gusted into the cannon zone. Use it well. What? I mean. I knew I could do that. Leo still I showing in the top lane. Well. Duritan's couch knows that. They are posturing aggressively. Regen Phoenix wisely backing up. Um, they're probably simply going to go ahead and let Duritan's couch take this in exchange for recapturing their top fort. Um, also, we're going to simply wait for those level 20s. Rabbit does you have to use his face melt in this way. Durkin Scout may be going to get aggressive for 20 here. Let's see how this goes. Red team has this. Arrow does secure top fort, evening out the forts one more time. It's nearly time. <laughs> York trying to secure siege camp to push during objective. Level 20 is oh so close. I love seeing what ETC is doing here. There's the taunt. Oh my goodness. Silent 
Can he pick Deathmosh in time? Can he do it? Oh, Flailing Swipe gets him away, and Falstad goes down. How did Falstad go down? Falstad and ETC traded out. I do believe that is in Dirt's and Scouts' favor, though. Leo showing up. There's the taunt on the Phantoms. There's the Nano. In the lurking arm, though, Phantoms has to get out of it, and he does. He starts pressing buttons, silence and tomb. Nobody from Zutan Phoenix has gone down yet. How is that possible? And it's actually Tassadar that goes down. Gohan is in trouble. He goes down, as does Goliath. How does Phantoms get out of that? Wow. That will be game, probably. Um, they're going to get sappers, get bottom four, and that should end the game in favor of Regen Phoenix. I don't know how in the world Phantoms got out of that, but did. And it is a ace. All members of the couch falling, sent back to the Hall of Storms. Sappers have been secured. Gus, that's actually not a bad play. If these sappers go into the fort, oh no, because Arrow's going to get mid. So I think regardless, yeah, these two go down and then the channel, and that'll be sick. So that, that'll be it right there. A 2-0 sweep. Nope, Falstad going to YOLO in. I mean, you got to do it, right? You have to try. Earl Shep playing until the bitter end. And now, Regen with the 2 sweep over Durton's couch. Not 3-0. And look, I remembered. Here is the tab screen. I apologize for the text overlay there, but uh, I think you can... There we go. So a pretty dominant performance early. Early it was kind of looking like... Uh, I should say pre-10, which is not surprising. Between 4 and 10, Durton's couch was having some success there. But once uh, 10s came on, other than uh, the odd pick here or there, uh, Regen Venix looked very, very strong. Largely controlled this game. Getting uh, Rabbit and Phantoms kind of onto their heroes, uh, their comfort heroes, I, w I think is a, uh, how you word that properly. Rabbit known for his solid ETC plague. Phantoms the same on Kerrigans. On Kerrigan. And there we go. So, happy Saturday evening to you all. And congrats to Regen Phoenix for the 2 0 domination two weeks ago over Duritan's Couch. I look forward to our match on Tuesday, casted by the one, the only, Bonkai. Uh, have a great West rest of your weekend, all. And thank you for the cast, Arrow. And uh, I'm going to go read my kids' bedtime stories, because it's their bedtime. So have a good night.